Hey, it's me, Big P, and I wanted to go over the Energy Blade cast on Crit Inquisitor uh, as it stands now. I have finally figured out what spell I'm using in the cast on Crit, and it is, in fact, Crackling Lance. I almost said Captain Lance. Shouts to Captain Lance for inspiring the whole Ivory Tower uh, stat stacker type build. It's really kind of awesome. Um, and now that I'm fully into scaling my ES pool as damage, you can kind of see where, like, the, uh, you know, the the ceiling of, of stat stacking kind of is um but uh, really i'm just gonna go show off the skill itself and the damage that i can do tier 16 burial chambers with this uh whatever um kind of more monster life more it's gonna be a scary monster let's just put it that way we'll do uh searing exarch as well i think we should be good to go um made a lot of upgrades i'll go over them um because i think we finally finalized like gear slots and stuff like that there is still like flexibility and stuff depending on your setup um but i have moved actually now into like using an onslaught flask and stuff like that it's gonna be kind of hard to tell exactly what i'm hitting and the build still isn't like super tank everything invincible but as far as a fun mapper and strong clear as far as a league starter goes it was really cool to kind of put together and i highly recommend it not to mention just the fact that you can do pretty much whatever you want with it i found the two crackling lances you know because crackling lance i played crackling lance inquisitor um and the crackling lance gem itself has built in intensify and intensify is a mechanic that doesn't work unless you're self-casting it so this wasn't really an option um to use as a cast on crit skill i mean it was but you'd be losing out on the built-in uh sort of power generation power scaling that it had on the skill gem itself uh, and now you have two separate alternate uh, transfigured gems rather um, one is basically this the one that I'm using for clear still gets like almost one mil tool tip DPS by the way for the clear I think I'm gonna actually boss with it um, just because the difference between these two well the different there's a pretty solid difference in how they work it's really more the area one's a clear skill one's a single target skill um, but now that we've kind of consolidated all our defenses and have stuff like leech um energy shield leech only and stuff like that like i don't know it's feeling pretty smooth we have had to work on clarity getting enough mana reservation and things like that i was able to fit defiance banner in the build now that i have enlighten and yeah it's just i'm just chilling in maps trying to build up a map pool for the second build because uh, this one seems pretty solid i mean the next steps would be uh probably buying just you know min maxing a build like this can just be a pretty infinite money sink especially with all the power and like charms and cool new jewels and things like that it's it's pretty crazy how uh how much the ceiling is on this league for for this build in particular because uh the the charms can have a lot of like percent strength just a lot of stat stuff from a chieftain and inquisitor really i have like a, a live search going for them but they cost like four or five div for like a really good one so i think we're about anywhere between like a dozen maybe 20 div uh, if you really have to buy like every single piece yourself for the current gear setup that i have which i will post in the pob um or i mean in the description i'll post the pob for this current setup um but like, like i said before it really is better to go to captain lance's build Build guide he has it's way more comprehensive and detailed about cast on crit as a full archetype i just kind of wanted to show off you know how we got it done oh nice proc two breaches in here oh maybe more than two breaches quite a couple but yeah the clear is really nice um with the branching one the other one looks kind of more like a laser i'll swap into it after this breach just so you can see and i think you know let's be i i kind of do want a new okay so you see we're kind of losing a bit but that's more where you're standing on the Baron Square. All right, let's put a portal down just in case. It is a tier 16 map. And we've been farming Breach, Harbinger, just Alk and Go. Nothing like super juiced or focus. So we're still going to be using the clear skill here. I'm just going to be spinning in. Um, we have like Molten Shell and Determination and stuff like that. Now you can move into like Purity of Elements. Um, a lot of other stuff. It is feeling pretty decently tanky now not like insane but the tankiness really comes with the effective hit pool oh i'm glad we can we proc so many breaches the multi-breach after i just specced into it 
because I do need to finish up a couple like uh, the hidden is one that I want to do I was able to do um, like Cyrus my own Cyrus my own shaper and it was witness and like all that shit like it's um, cast on crit overall is kind of underwhelming as a bosser though if not just because you have to both be especially if you're going to use cyclone uh, as your spell you're, you're going to be spinning on stuff cyclone as your trigger skill I mean um, so you got to be like able to touch stuff or at least get in fast enough so I've opted for um, an onslaught flask I don't really care that I, I know I'm going like over the break point it's like a uh, technically suboptimal I don't really give a shit I value the little bit of move speed more to close the distance so that I can actually start getting the spell off um, by spinning on it. You know what I mean? I feel like in Path of Exile, you gotta, you gotta kind of make those calls yourself. All right, let's see some single target. I mean, this is for the clear skill. Like, you know, like this is, I'll, I'll come back out and loot. Actually, I'll come back and loot after the thing because this is a pretty juiced map and we're just kind of creaming it, you know? Magic and normal monsters are, are one shot nearly immediately and then the rare the rares kind of go pretty quick too i mean it just feels great unless they have both like spell and crit resist or like super huge more life multipliers even if they're empowered i didn't do the empower but i have been doing the league mechanic all the way up to tier 16 with this build um oh two chayulas all right here we go there's one there's two and i was taking that with negative 33 chaos res because i just have a big effective hit pool that's pretty cool i'm not gonna complain about that and again this is with the clear skill this isn't even with the setup that has like the the crackling oh no, i was about to say there you go kind of got stuck on there so yeah keeping moving at, if you're gonna go back and forth over the same spot definitely gonna take a death there um but that's more skill issue build issue sort of thing than a build issue Remember to pop your flasks now that you know you are low life. It is quite important. Who cast Ice Nova? I kind of wanted to see if I could tank that, but no, whatever. Anyway, let's go do the boss boss and then the other boss. I will swap to Disintegration for this just so you can see kind of the difference. Why I might opt for the Crackling one uh, instead of this one. But here we go. Okay, kind of scary. And there's the boss down. Really should swap to a uh, frost or flame dash or maybe even shield charge for general mapping. But now that I have this stuff going, all right, watch this. Should be able to kill him. Uh, I forgot he's increased uh, move speed and stuff. A little bit quicker than usual. So still very good though. But as you can see, I mean. Having to spin on stuff, your damage uptime, you know, you really need to get the build to a very high level for it to feel really good and creamy and smooth as a as a mapper. Um, I think overall, uh, the difference is just this is as the big area of effect, but we can just self-cast the ones that we don't have. So this one is just like, if you just cast it without the intensify stacks, if you've ever played Crackling Lance, you cast it like while you're standing still, one, two, three, and then you end up in this part with this, this like laser blasts. This one, this gem actually has plus 20 to maximum effective shock. Um, of course, it doesn't force you to get up there, but you know, it is uh, it is possible to get up there, especially with the huge flat lightning damage we're dealing, thanks to our energy blade and things like that. So while it's definitely not as good um, for clear, you're procking enough times so that it, it shouldn't really matter. Uh, unless the map is very dense um, and it's probably overall better for indoor setups but uh yeah, real quick i mean we got the ivory tower and we're just doing the usual links cyclone cast on crit your spell of choice with inspiration spell blade and increased critical damage i am running minus six to mana cost on my rings but i think i'm still running clarity no actually i was able to drop clarity now for defiance banner and stuff instead um, the Defiant Spanner is here. Here's a cast and damage taken Molten Shell. You can really kind of max it out, um, just because you have a huge effective hit pool, so it's pretty nice. Here we have my Enlighten, which I put Determination, Wrath, and Discipline in. The big one's here. Uh, I guess you could put Zealotry in here instead, but you kind of need to fully, um, preserve your life, uh, to get the most out of Ivory Tower. So, like, let's say if we swap these two, 
Um, it actually wouldn't be as... Well, first off, I don't have enough mana to do that, so... The way we have it set is just fine. Again, you're going to have to tweak that, um, along with mana reservation stuff on the tree. You might come down here and have to do it here if you want to fit more crap in. I don't really know what the deal is, um, but... Uh, you know, you got to kind of figure it out on your own. And then... This is, this is just where I'm gem swapping for now. It's basically a free slot that you can maybe put like a, you know, a shield charge into or something. I'm using Frost Blink with Arcane Surge. I actually have to level this down now um, so that it's proccing every one instead of every two, but like, I don't know. Boots uh, can get much better. You can use Stampede if you don't want to, or if you don't want to use like Speed Flask, but between the more move speed on the Cyclone Gem itself and then like, you know, having an automated flask it just felt good for for mapping I'm, I'm using this to like farm like speed farm maps but either tried some destructive play tried some x-arc alters crap like that it's pretty fun um and this is the arrogant setup vitality precision and then zealotry which actually takes up like a large chunk but that's so you can basically fully reserve um i'm missing only about like 100 or 200 life here uh but it goes to one every time because of course getting elixir anyway so life doesn't really matter here's where we have kind of like a, the real min max area so enhance with energy blade the buff gives you like um basically i was like running around 6k with the quality and the stuff now once this levels up again or levels up at the first time rather uh we'll get a quality bonus and it'll be even nicer just a bigger shield which I don't know if it actually means bigger damage, but it definitely means more tankiness. And then Assassin's Mark with Mark on hit, uh, being able to have a 5% chance to grant a power charge when hit is awesome. It kind of brings up your crit consistency. Also, also didn't mention on my boots, I have Brittle Ground while moving and CDR of travel skills. Neither of these are necessary, although Brittle Ground can help if your crit isn't super consistent, which is super important on a cast on crit build. Uh, yeah, gearing, I mean, gearing it is just so easy. I mean, you just get like a white side cut item for your weapon because your sword is your weapon, your your energy shield is your weapon, and then you just build into the uniques as they come. Wrathpith was the last thing, but it's like under a divine now. You don't have to really rush into it, um, but you will notice, you know, that this was the last big chunk, and now it's just coming in jewels and things like that. We did get the traitor. I have a pretty decent Watcher's Eye. There's a lot of stuff you can do in the Watcher's Eye because you are running so many ores. So maybe try and snipe a cheaper one uh, that doesn't necessarily have the exact stuff I have. Mine is just a little bit more damage, a little bit more regen. And it's just, you use every energy shield, life, and mana all scale you up. It's just a very sort of like well-rounded build. Feels good to do content and uh, it's just fun to play. I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. And uh, I'm especially happy I don't have to buy like, uh, whatchamacallit, um, split personalities, which are like 25 div for the strength int ones. You'd have to also buy a cluster jewel, which can get pretty expensive. This was decently expensive um, in like the last, I should, guess I should go over the charms. I mean, that's another place where it can go really expensive. Mine are kind of whack. I haven't bought any charms. These are only ones I've found. Like crits have calling strike is really nice. Spell sub would be nice if we could maybe get to mage pain, but like, I guess it's not that far, but uh, it wouldn't actually be significant. I don't think we need, we can really fit stuff in the build. And then like, this is like an extra like thousand or no, an extra hundred ES. And then this is more leech does energy shield as well as helping with resistances. It kind of reminds me of a, an Omni build, except it's more well-rounded and tanky uh, because your suffix slots are going to be filled up by these attribute points. So you kind of have to run. See, I have the onslaught flask here that's running, but that gives me, that's how I'm capping my uh my res um i could kind of probably move out of like the cold res here but like i don't know i, I bought the whoa what the hell that is a super weird bug how is that even happening i've never seen anything like this oh where did i take those from oh from the floor okay uh anyway okay uh i don't want this to be too long i mean just kind of wanted to showcase where the build is at now because i think i'll probably stream it tomorrow but we're probably going to move into the next build and then maybe try an experiment or two um this is looking pretty much finished though i mean you can min max it more for bossing more for mapping all sorts of stuff um but the pace line was very successful in terms of trying and experimenting new stuff i tried frost bomb for a bit but that was like you know you have to put less duration instead of inspiration in your main links and then it doesn't have the reach that crackling lance does crackling lance has a really nice like reach which is what the build was sorely lacking and a very strong immediacy 
to the damage. I've always liked this uh, friggin' uh, big laser beam one, but it felt terrible to aim. Because, you know, if you're shooting here, if you're aiming your mouse here, you're missing this stuff here, you're missing this stuff here. Cast on crit, you don't really have that problem because it's aiming for you. So, kind of just slotted right in and fit beautifully uh, into the game. So, let me know what you're doing. Uh, if you've done the cast on crit, anything like that, if there's anything I'm missing, I did try stuff like Glacial Cascade, uh, Voltaxic Burst, I think I, I should. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff to experiment and tinker with. It's pretty fun. But, uh, um, pretty, I mean, I, I will put upgrades into it here and there probably, but this is pretty solid. I feel happy where it is right now. Um, and don't really find it necessary to, like, kind of over... Uh, invest into it unless i wasn't going to do any other builds if you wanted to if you only play one character league i can highly recommend this one um if not just because it'll take you from the very start all the way deep deep into the end game doing ubers and stuff like that um i haven't done it myself but i'm almost positive i can do like the feared and stuff like that i did a cortex just while leveling still in the cock cosprey's setup you can look at my previous videos if you want to see how to put it together but this one right here it is just about done. So shouts to Skeleton Milton and big shouts to Captain Lance. Captain Lance did a great guide um, on it overall that I was able to refer to when I had like little questions and like details. Stuff wasn't working. There's a lot of little things like cost and the uh, like chance to hit, maxing your crit chance and stuff. So, you know, don't be afraid. It's, it is pretty s simple and fun to play when it's all put together, but you know, Definitely be aware that it is a build that has parts that need to kind of lock together to really kind of scale properly into the end game. Um, or you could just play a Cosprey's version if you're really not interested in this big investment in stat stack and bullshit like that. Um, but cast on crit, that's what's up. Oh, I was able to do this. Like this is what killed the friggin' uh, King of the Mists or whatever for me. That's how I have all my all my charm slots and stuff. Like that's how good it is. So if you're looking for something like that, you could boss with it. You can map with it. Nice, well-rounded. Could not be happier. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.